everyone. Thank you for finding this video. I'm so glad that you could join me on this great message that I have for you from God. And today is January 15th, 2023. And I got this message on January 11th, 2023 at 1.28 a.m. The Lord speaks to me sometimes. He gives me uh, prophetic words, visions, dreams sometimes. And um, he wakes me up in the night or it could be during the day. And I write it all down and I pray on it and then I bring it straight to you. So I've got a really great message here and I, and I pray that you can stay to the end of the message because that's when you get the full message. Um, you know, we can tell, we can see, you know, that a lot of people jump around through the videos and um, it's really important if you really want to hear a message from God to start at the beginning and go all the way to the end to get the full uh, message. And um, if you can subscribe, that would be great and like and share by sharing the messages. It really helps to get the messages out to more people. And that is what it's all about. We need to be really spreading God's word. So I really appreciate that. And if you have already subscribed, I want to say thank you so much for supporting this channel. And, um, you know, and I, and I pray that it has enlightened you and you are receiving God's word and his messages. And it is enlightening and um, doing something great for your life. And it's working in, in your life. And um, so I like to get started right away. And um, so I'm sleeping 1.28 a.m. And I start to hear God saying these words. Wakes me up. Twisted shifted, conniving, colluding, criminals, disgusting, sinners, faithless, unbelievers, raunchy, careless, ridiculous. And I said, I asked, Lord, who are you describing? And he says, the enemy's puppets. So many are deceived. They believe the lies and the deceit. They are so weak. They are so governed by their flesh. This is what God is saying now. They love their flesh so much. They love it over me. They love their fame and fortune. Their designer this and their designer that. And then I saw an image of a woman with a very expensive designer bag and designer shoes walking. They love their designer belongings. They love their money. They love their cars, their big mansions and their big homes. So many have turned their back on me to have their fleshly desires. God says, do you know that these fleshly desires have an expiry date? They are sh such short-lived things. None of it will give you eternity in heaven. Like I will, God says. And I went to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1 says, for we know that if this earthly house, this tent, that is our earthly home, is destroyed. We have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. In the scripture, which is all um, written through, you know, it's all God's word written through man, says that our earthly house, if it is destroyed, we will have, um, don't worry, because we will have a greater home in heaven that isn't made with earthly hands and it will last for eternity. And God calls it a tent. So what we have, even if it's a mansion or, uh, you know, a big home that you're, you're turning your back on, he still, our homes to him is like a tent um, on this planet because our home in heaven is so much greater than even any mansion here on earth. God says, you all know the scriptures. You, you've all been exposed to the word at some point in your life. And yet you turn your back on me. And he says, for what? For some money, some trinkets, some jewelry, some vehicles you're driving, some house that you're living in. Shame on you. I listen as you make up your excuses as to why you kicked me out of your life. Petty. Petty, petty excuses. You make up anything in exchange for your greed, for these shiny things, these trinkets, these toys. You think these things define you. You think this is who you are. And God showed me quotation marks who you are. This is nothing compared to the person I made you to be. It is not who you are. Those things don't define you. It isn't who you are. You are made in the image of God. 
Holy Spirit comes upon me. And, and you know, Holy Spirit, God's Spirit is an emotional being. So it gets me emotional. Okay. And um, so then I went to Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he, crea he created him. So God created us to be, you know, righteous and worthy and holy and, and great. You know, not that we are on God's level, but in greatness, you know, and, and to have the earthly pleasures, you think, you know, having that mansion or that expensive car or these designer things, he's saying, that isn't what he created you to be. You have chosen a dark path. The path of the enemy slowly sucking you in, down his path, down his rabbit hole. You are chasing after his carrot. Walking into it blindly. Yeah, go ahead and keep on making up excuses as to why you turned your back on me. And keep on walking down that rabbit hole and see where that gets you. Everyone will pay the price for turning their back on me. When the judgment day comes and you are not allowed in heaven, the only other place to go is to hell. I went to 2 uh, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. It says, we, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it is good or bad. So no matter if you lived a righteous, holy life, you're still going to get judged. There is a judgment day for everyone, good or bad, God is saying, and you will have to. You would just will be judged for the things that you have done. The enemy is going to drag you down, straight down to hell for eternity. And God says, I ask you, I beg you to reconsider. Look at all your options. Where do these options lead you? Step outside of the box for just five minutes and evaluate where is your life headed? Where are you going to spend eternity? Step outside of the box and go beyond your earthly desires, your earthly flesh. Go beyond the short years that you have on this life, in this life, and think about what eternity you want to live in. There are only two choices, God says, heaven or hell. Repent now. Take back all those cruel words you said about me, all the blame you put on me, and put the blame where the blame is due. It belongs to the enemy, not me. Take a moment and open your eyes as wide as you can. Open your ears as wide as you can. And listen to yourself. Have you ever listened to yourself? Have you ever listened to what you are saying, what you are doing? You are so ridiculous. Your thoughts are so ridiculous because you don't belong, because they don't belong to you, God's saying. They belong to the enemy. The enemy is controlling you. He is sucking you down that rabbit hole. He wants you to spend eternity with him so he can laugh and spit in your face every day. He doesn't love you. He doesn't care about you. He is incapable of love. I'm the one who has nothing but love for you. I am your father. I am your creator. I am your maker. I have nothing but love for you. But you must, you must repent of your sins. You must turn from your fleshly ways, your wicked ways. Because you are in the snare of the enemy. But when you turn from your wicked ways, the snare opens and you will be freed. You will be able to walk away and you will be able to leave that bottomless pit for greed and shopping and addictions and fame and fortune and importance and your reputation. All these earthly things that don't matter to me, God says. When you repent and you say you're sorry and you want to leave that dark place, the snare will open and you will walk out freely. You will leave your bondage behind you. Your shopping addictions, your greed for money, the empty void you have because you left me. Turn from it now. Turn your face back to me. And God is saying there that 
there is an empty void in you because you left God. There's God fills us. He fills our heart. He fills our mind. He fills our soul. He fills us right up. And when you leave God, you have an empty void in you now. And God is saying, because you have that empty void, you feel like you have to fill it with the greed for money and shopping and addictions, all kinds of addictions, not just shopping, fame and fortune. And, you know, you think your reputation is so important and um, like your importance in life because you're trying to fill the void that God needs to be filling inside of you. Not all of these artificial things. God says they're meaningless things. He says, um, oh yeah, so I saw uh, an image of, I saw a person that looked so lost and broken and helpless. And I just saw the hands of God come down from heaven and was holding the person's face. They're just holding the person's face in their hands. And tears were just streaming out of the person's eyes. And, and they were just crying and crying because they came back to God and God was holding them. And, 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 and um, you know, the person was crying and repenting. And God says, I love you so much. I welcome you back, my precious child. So beautiful. And I see the person open their eyes for the first time because once they repented and they, and they came back to God, they were able to see the snare that they were in. They were able to see the actual life they were living. God showed them. Their eyes were open for the first time. And they were able to see um, that how dark their life was and how lonely and meaningless it was. And it was all a facade. It was all a show just to fill the void, the empty void where God needed to be in their lives. They were trying to fill it with other things. The very thing they thought they didn't need, which was God, um, and they just had to keep on filling that void with other things. The very thing they needed was God, and they didn't realize it. And they were filling it with, you know, you know, you know, all of the addictions and all of the 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 the, the brand new things, you know, and all the stuff and all the name brand things and the fame and the fortune, and the you know the the need for importance and to be accepted by earthly people and earthly things. And they saw that it was a facade and it was such a dark place. God forgives when you lay down your life for him on your knees and you just come to him like a child and you just say, God, I've really messed up. How did I walk away from you in the first place? Then God showed me how it happens. How how the enemy pulls us away from God. I'm going to need to drink water for this. So I saw a person, the same person, this guy, walking down the street. And he walked away from God. So he doesn't have God to fill the void in his heart and in, in, in his soul and his mind. So the, he's fair game for the enemy. And I saw... A person who was used by the enemy walk by him and just tap him on the shoulder like just to say hello taps him on the shoulder and when that one tap happened the enemy downloaded this person with the things that he thinks he needs to fill the empty void he thought and, and he filled it with with the greed and addictions and desires for money and power and objects and stuff and fame and fortune and just in that one moment, the enemy put all of that, downloaded it into his mind and, and filled him with that because he was empty. He didn't have God filling his heart and filling the void. So now the enemy was fair game. He just came upon and just filled him with all these things that he thought he needed to fill the void. And right then their mind gravitated to all of these earthly things. And they were, you know, thinking, ah, that's what I need to fill all this void. I'm going to feel better. And it's that quickly that the person, a person can get away from God and get into, you know, um, the enemy's snare. And God says that quickly, that moment, that juncture, they got away from God, all because they weren't walking in a strong faith and relationship with God. How quickly it can happen when the enemy dangles that carrot in front of your eyes. And it is very painful, God says, for him to watch a person leave God just like that. But God says, 
It is so wonderful and exuberating when the person comes back and they come back after going to the dark side and they come back to God and God says they will never go back to the dark side. It is very rare God says that once they were in the dark side and they saw the light of day, they saw the light of Jesus and they came back to God. They are soul. They, they are filled with the true meaning of life, with the true love of God. And their hearts are filled with everything they truly need. They never go back, God says. And then I saw the person so joyous and so happy. And God was so happy. And, and I, I know you're going to say, well, did you see God? How do you know he was happy? Because God just downloads me with his feelings. So I know God was happy. And the person was joyous and happy. <clears throat> and God says, it's never too late until your last breath. And he is holding out his hand, waiting for you to come back. God says he needs us. Okay, so now God says he needs us as Christians, believers, to do the legwork and do the footwork on this planet. To go out and to grab the person from the grips of hell, from the grips of eternity of hell, and pull them up and bring them back to God. God needs us to do the work for him. We are the flesh, God says. We represent God's arm. When God works through us to pull the person up out of the darkness, we are the vessel so God can, you know, pull them up with his arm by our words, our actions, by us laying hands on the person. But we have to get out there and we are God's arm and God's hand and we and God stretches it out through us, okay? God works through us. Jesus works through us. And, and, and this is how we pull the person back, okay? So God is, is ama amazing. He is, you know, we can't see him because he is so powerful and so, so, you know, powerful, I guess is the word. And he, he you know, he cannot come as God down in front of a, a, a human's face and say, hello, come out of the darkness because the person would, you know, die or explode or catch on fire. So we have, when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, Jesus stepped inside us. We have Holy Spirit working through us. So we are God's arm. We are God's hand. And, and when we get out there and we lay hands on people or we, we, we just, we're just speaking, okay, we're, we're, God is, you know, speaking, we're speaking God's word, the word of Jesus through our mouths. We are the vessel. God says he needs us to pull people from the depths of hell, from the eternity of hell. So we are in the fleshly form. We are like our brothers and sisters, or our, you know, they are brothers and sisters once they accept Jesus Christ. But you know, our, our our fellow man, we are all humans in the flesh, so they can relate to the flesh. They can't relate to, um, you know, so much as you know, Holy Spirit coming. If a spirit showed up in front of you, or an angel showed up in front of you, you may run the other way. <laughs> so it's much easier for us because we are on the same level with each other to be able to minister to each other. And to be able to pull people from the darkness. It isn't us. We only have strength through the authority of Jesus Christ, through Father God and Holy Spirit. We are just the vessel, the, the flesh vessel, okay? And God needs us to do our work. He says we have to do the footwork and the legwork. And when you put on God's armor, it says that we need to put on the shoes for the peace of the gospel because our shoes need to be out there walking and spreading the gospel. That's our legs, our feet going out there and walking. And God is our arm. He, he, you know, we are God's arm. And when we're out there, you know, we shake hands, we, we lay hands on people and, and we, 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 um, you know, touch a person that is God coming through us and able to do the, the, the blessing of that person to wake them up. And whatever we're saying off of our tongue, that is the word of Holy Spirit and Jesus coming out of our mouths. So we got to do the work, God says. Whew. I hope you understand that loud and clear. And I also want to say this, okay? So I do. I do go out and pray for people. And I minister to people. And um, I, you know, I'm always talking about God and Jesus to people. And if you are not comfortable, if you are not at that level and you are not comfortable, you know, 
we are expected as Christians to be going and helping saving people from hell, as the message says. But maybe, maybe this is your level. Maybe you can spread the love of Christ. And people don't realize this, you know, just by saying hello to a person and smiling and being happy and saying hello and opening the door for somebody and offering to pay for a coffee for somebody who's behind you in line. And I'm not even talking about people that look like they can't afford it, which we definitely need to help people in that position. But it could be a person who's even dressed in a suit. And when somebody is kind and generous and happy and loving and talking and saying, you know, can, hey, can I get you a coffee? You know, even this person who definitely could afford it, when somebody else comes out, steps out, they may be having a super bad day. They may have just gotten fired from their job. They may not. They look like they can afford things, but they may not. Everyone is just like one paycheck away from losing it all. So no matter if they look, you know, like they really can't afford the coffee or, you know, homeless or anything like this, or they look like they can afford to buy you the coffee, we need to be offering and, and just reaching out and saying, hello, how's your day? Um, you know, opening the door for somebody, offering to carry something for somebody, um, you know, and, and compliment people and just say, you know, I really like your coat or, I, you know, your, um, your, your, whatever, <laughs> your bag is nice or you, you have a nice smile or anything like this. That person may have just lost their job. They have may have just lost a loved one um, or had a separation in a marriage or something devastating is going on in their life and just something so sweet and so basic as, hello, um, can I open the door for you or can I buy you a coffee? They will probably burst out in tears and you'll know when people are on their last nerve and their last dollar and their, their, their last hope in this world, when they break down in tears or they just grab onto you, they're going to leech and grab onto you and hug you. And you're going to know, wow, this was a divine appointment from God. And you will be blessed, my friend. It is going to bless you. You will be so blessed for reaching out. And so God is going to be blessed because you bless this person. And that's going to make God happy. And this person is going to be so blessed because you were kind and sweet to them and you showed God's love to them. This is how it works, okay? And you don't have to say, hey, do you believe in God like I do? And get out there and say, hey, you know, how's your faith? Do you believe in Jesus? And, you know, all this kind of stuff, which is great. But even if you plant a seed or you're watering the seed, somebody else planted the seed, maybe earlier that day or that week, somebody already talked to them and ministered to them about God. And now they're seeing the fruits of the Spirit. They're seeing the personality traits of Jesus coming out. They're seeing how kind and sweet and loving and generous and nice you are. They're going to say, wow, there really are good people and kind people left in the world. And, you know, they may say, why are you helping me? Why are you being nice to me? And then then it's a, you know, that's the door open for you to go to the next level, the next step and say, you know, God showed me to you. God led me to you. And, and I have so much love from God and Jesus inside me. I can't help but love other people. And that is such a great way to open the door. But if you even don't get to that level and you're just sweet and kind and loving and happy and joyful, it's going to spread the word of God in an indirect way. And, you know, the person is slowly receiving the message. It's small deposits into their life. And then maybe little further and you know we can pray for people too too and say god please show another person to to this person you know allow another person to make another deposit today uh, allow another person to be kind or another person to say god bless you or another person to you know do something good for that person then they're going to start waking up like why is everybody saying god bless me today why is everybody being kind to me today and then the final person who will enter that person's life that day or that week or let's say that month, they, they'll minister, you know, they'll bring them to know Jesus. So it may not be you, but we all have a job to do. And, and, you know, you know, your, your job is important to start the, the ball rolling and the person at the end, their job is to bring it to completion by bringing them to salvation and, you know, um, allowing them to be saved by Jesus Christ. So we all have a really important job to do. Whatever level you feel you are on, whatever, you know, God is calling you to do. Maybe God is calling you to say, 
you know, give that person $20. They really need it. And if you feel an irking and urging inside of you, that's God working through you. Don't ignore those moments. And, you know, go up to the person and say, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I never did this before, but I feel like God's talking to me and telling me to help you out and to give you this gift. And, and they'll just burst out in tears because it was a divine appointment from God. And they're just going to say, oh my gosh, I was just praying. Like, how am I going to pay for this thing over here? I, I'm on, I, I had nothing, no food left. And now I can buy at least, uh, you know, a couple of things for, for my, my, my kids and myself. And you will be blessed so much. You will be blessed so much. And the other person will be blessed so much. And God is going to love it. <laughs> he loves it when, he, when we do this work. <laughs> so... Um, I don't know how we ended up getting on to, you know, sometimes Holy Spirit will lead me on to different things. But at the end of this message, um, which it is the end of the message, I was just thanking God, you know, thanking him for so many things. And I'm going to tell you all the things that I thanked him for. I said, after this message, I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you for working through us. I surrender myself to you, Lord, to be your conduit, to be your messenger, to be your mouth, to claim the gospels to the people, to shout out the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for giving me a mind like Christ. Thank you for giving me a mouth that can be used by you, Lord. Thank you for giving me your strength and your endurance and your love for the people. Because I have love for you and you have love for me, God, it's so easy to love each other. It's so easy to love. Um, when you have love in your heart from God and God gives you that love and you give the love back to God, it's just so easy for it to spill out to our other, you know, humans or, or mankind or our brothers and sisters in the Lord and um, um, you know so I just said thank you Lord we are everything with you but nothing without you and for that we need to give all the praise and the glory to God Father God Jesus and Holy Spirit because God truly deserves it in Jesus mighty precious holy name <laughs> hallelujah praise the lord amen amen and i just want to take a moment right now and pray that you did make it to the end of this message and that you were blessed by this message and that you were able to take something from this message and utilize it in your own life or to help another person with this message please share it please um give the thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already to check out all the other messages from god holy spirit come Bless the, the, the viewers. Go into their homes, their minds, their hearts, their eyes, their ears. Let them have courage and, and discernment. Show them who to go to. Set up the divine appointments so that they know who needs to hear God's word, which pretty much is everybody in my opinion. But I pray that Holy Spirit will guide you on your path and um, guide you every step of the way and lead you to the people who need to hear God's word the most and um, to make your small deposits or to do your end game, bringing them to salvation, saving souls. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless each and every one of us and, and give everybody an extra big hug with your, your joy and your peace and your love and all, all of your protection from the enemy, Lord. Keep us safe, all of our families, all of our loved ones. In your precious, holy, holy name, Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you guys for staying to the end of the message. And again, I do pray and hope that you uh, received something that you can take from this message. Not all messages, um, you know, minister the same way to each person. You may have, you know, one little thing may have caught your attention. And um, that's exactly how it is with God. He leads you to videos and leads you to this and that because he wants you to hear just that <laughs> one little bit. Um I, I hope that you can find the other messages, the other videos, Tammy Hands Ministries, and I would love it if you can leave a comment. And um, I always read the comments and answer. And if you want to email, it's um, in the description below. Tammy, T-A-M-I, Hands Ministries at gmail.com. I would love to get um, any emails from you. Any correspondence would be great. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Whoops. <laughs> on another video. Have a great day, my friends. Bye for now.